Hi, it's Patrick Hatzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com, where we instantly improve the lives for families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can make informed decisions, have peace of mind, real power, real control, and so that you can influence decision-making fast, even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered. And in last week's episode, I answered another question where I featured another case study. And the case study last week was my 63-year-old dad has been in intensive care for 10 weeks. He's still on the ventilator and tracheostomy. When will he be off the ventilator? You can check out last week's episode by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to answer the next question from my client, Robert, which are excerpts from email counseling and consulting sessions with me. And the question this week is part 11 of my 68-year-old mother is in intensive care with gastric perforation and she's not waking up after the surgery. Will she need a tracheostomy? You can also find previous questions from this series of questions answered by clicking on the links below this video in the written version of this blog. And if you are watching this on YouTube, just click on the link below this video and that'll get you the website. So Robert continues with his mother's situation as follows. He writes, Hi Patrick, when my mum was in Brazil, she was given the antibiotic colistin. The best we could tell, it was effective for whichever bacteria she had at the time. Here at the hospital in Seattle in the United States, they've given her several other antibiotics as part of the treatment, but they've held back on the colistin because it's known to negatively impact kidneys and is generally considered a high-powered antibiotic that they don't use loosely. So what we are wondering is the following. Given that she's starting on dialysis and the fact that mum's kidneys were generally healthy, she didn't have chronic kidney disease or anything. And the fact that we know that she responded well to the colistin in Brazil, would you think them going ahead and giving her colistin is a good idea? Obviously, we can't actually make that decision, but we are wondering if we should ask the question and plant the seed. Many thanks from Robert. So, here is my response. Hi Rob, colistin is usually given for pseudomonas infection. Do you know, A, where they located the infection at the time and if it definitely was a pseudomonas infection? Do you know, B, if your mother had her kidneys deteriorate in Brazil but not needing dialysis? And C, was colistin definitely effective during your mother's hospital stay in Brazil. So here is then Rob's response. He says, hi, Patrick. A, here are the responses to your questions. This is the best we know right now as our time in Brazil was a bit crazy. I don't think they had narrowed the infection down and we are not sure it was a pseudomonas infection. Next, to the best of our knowledge, there was no kidney function deterioration in Brazil. That was not an issue. The doctor said that the reason may be that she had healthy kidneys then and could take the hit. Her worry is that it's not the case now and colistin is almost certainly going to hit the kidneys. We can't be absolutely sure, of course, but we do. what we do know is that she was treated with colistin and the infection seemed like it was broad under control. Our general thinking is as follows. They're giving her roughly 10 to 20 percent odds of making it through. We realize there are never perfect numbers, but if colistin is one more tool to help her fight the infection and she's bon been on it before, we're wondering if it's worth treating her with the colistin. The downside I can think of it is that right now her kidneys may have a chance of recovering not sure what the chances are of that yet, and the colistin might reduce those chances. Many thanks from Robert. So here is my response. Hi Rob, thank you for clarifying my questions. 
Here is what I'm thinking, and I'm thinking more in terms of bigger picture here. You are absolutely correct to point out that their numbers, 10 to 20% 20, 20 survival chains, are never perfect. It may be good as a guidepost, but I also know from experience that it's an educated guess at best. With bigger picture, I really mean looking at issues such as your mother's white cell count and other blood results, her temperature or lack of such, her heart rate and if she can come off the inotropes or vasopressors. Those are all indicators in how well she's fighting the infection. I would also be curious to know what they have grown from various sources by now, i.e. is there pseudomonas in the lungs now? Where is the E. coli in the gut or has it spread elsewhere? As a general rule and from my experience, when patients are critical and are fighting an infection, right antibiotics can make a difference even with side effects such as temporary kidney failure. I do think, however, that from your last email, there are signs of improvement compared to 48 hours ago. Therefore, I'm thinking if it's the infection only that is her major issue at present. What is she doing now in terms of ventilation? For example, how much oxygen is she on? What's her PEEP? PEEP stands for positive end expiratory pressure. And what are her arterial blood gases like? I will stand by that the kidneys are the most quote-unquote forgiving organ and have a chance of recovering after critical illness. Having said that, with your mother's underlying diabetes, there's a higher chance of developing kidney impairment. One way or another, as long as she has an infection and there are no treatment limitations, it is their duty to find the right antibiotic and weigh up pros and cons with you and your family if it's the right thing to do or not. I really hope that helps, Robert. Let me know if you need more clarification around this or any other issues. Best wishes from Patrick. So, how can you become the best advocate for your critically ill loved one? How can you make informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence quickly whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? You get to that all-important feeling of making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn quickly how to make informed decisions, get peace of mind, real power, real control, and how you can influence decision-making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. Discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You'll get real world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. 
you'll get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what is really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's Your Questions Answered episode and I'll see you again next week in another update. Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or simply send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Or you can call me, find international phone numbers on our contacts tab. Also, check out our ebook section where you get more ebooks, videos and audio recordings and where you can also get one-on-one -on -one counseling and consulting with me via Skype over the phone or via email by clicking on the products tab. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.